Hey everybody, welcome back. I love prime lenses. I'll have to admit it. They tend to be sharper than zooms in general. They tend to have wider apertures, which allows you to let in a lot more light and really isolate your subject with a shallow depth of field. Um, the problem is, is that if you want to go traveling, if you want to go hiking, you want to uh, explore a, an area, you need to sort of bring a few different prime lenses to cover the different sorts of shooting situations you'll find yourself in. You may want a wide-angle lens to shoot landscapes, uh, a medium telephoto to shoot portraits and things like that. A and that's great, but what if you just want to travel light? What if you just want to carry one lens? And uh, this is something that I, I'm constantly struggling with. If I just want to have one camera and one lens in my bag, what would it be? What is my desert island lens? What is my desert island focal length? A lot of people end up uh, picking 35 millimeters, which is great, but uh, it's never really gelled with me. I always found 35 millimeters to be just a little bit too narrow, a little bit too long of a lens for the types of photography that I like to do. I think it's a little long for a lot of landscapes. I think it's a little long for shooting indoors, you know, in, in uh, cramped situations where you really can't back up to get more into the frame. And uh, and that's kind of a problem. On the other end of a spectrum is the 24 millimeter lens. And that's a great focal length as well. It's a lot wider, you can get a lot more in the frame, it's easier to uh, shoot photos indoors. The problem is, is that you tend to start getting more wide angle distortion when you go as wide as 24 millimeters. Uh, it's particularly when you're uh, photographing people. So, after a while, when I got back into film, and I have other videos about this, I discovered the 28 millimeter focal length, which is not all that common in prime lenses these days. Uh, generally, you either have like a 24 or a 35 or a 50. Uh, those are a lot more common nowadays. In this video, I'm going to tell you why a 28 millimeter lens is my desert island lens. It's the, it's the lens I would have welded to my camera if I could, and it's usable in so many different circumstances. I'm going to tell you the reasons why and why I think you should consider it. Let's take a look. Travel photography is what drove me to this focal length in the first place. When you're inside and you don't have room to back up any further, or if you want to capture the scope of a scene without chopping off the top or bottom, Unlike a 24mm and wider lens, you don't exaggerate the distances between things or make impressive sights any smaller in the frame than they are in reality. There's no disconnect between what you see with your eyes and what you can capture through the viewfinder. Typically for landscapes, I used to reach for my ultra-wide lens. I still do much of the time, but when I don't want to make the distant mountain peak look smaller or focus too much on the foreground if there isn't much interest there, 28mm is great. While still being wide enough to incorporate a foreground, this focal length is great when tightening up the composition and emphasizing the shape and form in a landscape. This was a huge surprise to me. I didn't imagine I'd like shooting portraits as much as I do at 28 millimeters. You can get close to your subject and still keep them rooted in their surroundings. With a wide aperture, you can still have a sense of three-dimensionality without completely obliterating the background. This is a lens best used when you want to remember the context of a moment, a sense of place along with the person at the center of it. And, unlike a wider lens, you don't get unflattering wide-angle distortion. While I don't claim to be much of a street photographer, the times I've used the 28mm lens to capture protests and local oddities when wandering around, I've been grateful to have it at my side. You do have to get quite close to your subject if you want a tight crop, but again, I usually choose to take a wider shot to get more context. This sort of goes hand in hand with travel, but I love 28mm for taking photos of my food and close-ups of little details I want to capture. 
you can capture your whole plate without standing up or taking a step back. These lenses tend to focus pretty close too, so they're a great choice for product and still life photography as well. So, those are a few reasons why I think a 28mm lens is the ideal prime lens, uh, particularly if you're looking to have just the one lens to take with you everywhere. It's great for travel and portraiture and landscapes. Um, I just, after a while using the 28mm lens on my Nikon F3, I kind of discovered that I saw the world at 28 millimeters. Now, you, you may not be particularly familiar with this focal length, but I really suggest you give it a try. Whether it be a 28 millimeter equivalent on a uh, on a crop sensor body, like which would be an 18 millimeter. 18 millimeters kind of translates to 28, 27, 28 millimeters. I just picked up the Fuji 18 millimeter f1.4 and I am in love with it. And there's gonna be a review on that one in a little bit. That equivalent focal length really is my Desert Island lens. So hopefully this has been helpful to you in some way. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel for more content like this, leave a comment in the comments down below, let me know what's your favorite focal length, is there something that really stands out to you? If you haven't discovered a focal length that really speaks to you, you use a lot of zoom lenses, take a look at the metadata in your photos and see what focal length you tend to zoom to in most of your images, you'll be surprised at what you'll find. Thank you again for joining me and I hope to see you next time.